Thanks for checking out this video today about five ways that you can check on whether or not your carpenter did a good job framing your project. My name's Bob and I'm a tiny house builder here in Chicago. I double check all my jobs two, three times over just to ensure that we make sure everything is level and perfect before we get into drywall and hanging cabinets because that's when we notice those mistakes that get overlooked in framing that we could have caught if we knew what to look for. You're gonna need some tools. You're gonna wanna get an eight foot level, just a cheap rafter square. You know, it doesn't have to be anything expensive. You can get the plastic one. You wanna pick up a framing square, which is the square that goes 16 inches this way and two feet this way. You want at least a 25 foot tape measure. Plans to your job. First thing you're gonna wanna check is whether or not a room is square. Now the easiest way to do that is you take your tape measure and you're gonna draw some diagonals with the tape measure. You're gonna go from opposing corners. So on a diagonal, I've got 147. I'm gonna check that, and it should be the same going the other way. And we, in fact, do have 147. So that's how you check to make sure your room is square. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is check your corners. I'm gonna position the level as close to the middle of the plane as possible. So not all the way on the floor and not all the way on the ceiling. You kind of want to get it as close to the center as possible. And then you're going to check it this way. And then you're going to turn the level and put it against the other wall. And you're checking both ways. You're checking to see, is that wall out of plumb this way? And is the wall out of plumb this way? When people are framing really fast, one of the things that gets overlooked is that the bubble is in the middle of the lines. Take a look at this. That's way out of square, and that's way out of square. You don't want it just between the lines. You want it perfectly in the middle, meaning on each side of the bubble, you got the same amount of space. That's how you're gonna make sure that you have a perfectly plumbed wall. Say you got a 10 foot wall, but you only have an eight foot level. And you have to center that level a foot off the ground and a foot down from the ceiling. Now, this is where it comes into play that you need to make sure that that bubble is exactly in the middle because as that line travels outward, it's gonna continue to, it's gonna continue to grow. The next thing we're gonna use our eight foot level for is gonna be to check to make sure that there's no major gaps between the studs. We're gonna make sure that the studs don't have a big belly in them. Sometimes it'll be touching on the top and it'll be touching on the bottom, but you'll have a gap in the middle here or the opposite will occur and the level will go like this. It'll kind of bounce back. It'll bounce back and forth like a teeter totter. That means that there's a belly in the middle of the stud. Now there's ways to fix that, but the biggest thing we're looking for here is how to catch for it. So you're gonna wanna take your level and you're gonna check it like this. You're gonna put your level on a diagonal and what you're checking for is you're gonna check to see, does the level touch all the spots? And if it doesn't, is, it, is there one in the middle that it doesn't touch? Is it bouncing a little bit? And in my case, I have two studs right here that are a little further back than say the, the other side. You hear that? So what that means is, is that those two studs on that side, they're gonna need what's called a drywall shim, which is just a paper um, shim, and we'll, we'll staple those right to the face of our drywall, and then that'll make sure that everything becomes an even plane. So you're gonna do it that way, then you go back and you cross the other way, same kind of bounce. Now in this case, I'm finding that I got two on this side that are bouncing and I got two on this side, which that's gonna tell me that I need to take a little bit out of this center stud, plane this out, and that's gonna make sure that everything um, planes correctly. Still with me? Yeah, I had to put this lens on. I know it looks like I'm in a security camera, but it was the only way to get this door frame to show up in the shot. So what we're looking for here is how do we know that our doors are square? See that trick right there? That's how you extend the tape. That's, an, that's a freebie. That's not part of the five. Let's do that again. You got to move the tape, take your knee, rip it up like this, and then push it down. But what we're looking for here is we're looking for a square opening. Now I got 96 that way and we got 96 that way. So that's how we check our door openings. You're going to want to do that to every single door. If you pull diagonals like that, 
That's the easiest way you're gonna check. Another thing you wanna check is your nailing patterns. Every single header has a different type of nailing pattern. On a two by 12, we go six nails every 16 inches on both sides. Two by 10, we go five. Two by eight, we go four. Two by six, we go three. Two by four, we go two. Every 16 inches on both sides. So here's how we use these. I like to have a framing square so I can just kind of throw it up in a door opening and I can check if things are level. Now, if I don't have a framing square with me, I'll use a 12 inch square like this. Now, what I'm looking for here is this better be perfect. And if it's not perfect, then I might go grab another level or something like that because something's a little goofy. See, it even rings a little bit when it's perfect. That's how you know it's good. No gap, no gap. Check it the other way, but I hope you enjoyed this video.